So aren't you quite the pool shark? <laughs> um, I, I'm, I shoot a good stick. Pretty good can stick. You, uh, can you tell us your, your story about you and your Minnesota friend? Minnesota Fats? The, the, yeah. Yeah, the fat man. Uh, uh, when I was in Nashville, uh, uh, I was still in the middle of the road, you know. I was still at it, you know. But everybody there was. <laughs> and up to two and three in the morning, you know, and writing songwriters, you know. But uh, anyway, uh, I was down at, uh, what's the, I think it was the Cumberland Hotel or something like that, uh, downtown. Yeah, it's a real old hotel in downtown Nashville. And I was in the lobby having a drink, and oh hell, it was about 1.30 or 2 o'clock in the morning. Man, uh, Fat Man was there. Minnesota Fats. I saw him sitting there, just out there having a drink by himself. Well, I couldn't resist it. I went over and sat down next to him and introduced myself. And of course. We, <laughs> we hit it right off, you know, me and Minnesota Fats. And, uh, Started talking about shooting pool. He, you know, what talked about me doing what I do and everything. And we started talking about shooting pool. And uh, so I was going to get a game going with him. And I said, I had set up a game. He said, How about tomorrow? I said, That's great. Yeah, let's do it, you know. And God dang, I went on home. It was about three o'clock when I got to the house. And I laid down. I was thinking about going to sleep. And I was, you know, I'm shooting a fat man. I'm shooting pool with the fat man here in, the, in a few hours. <laughs> and I was running through the game, man. I was already shooting around with him, you know. And uh, he called me and that morning before I, before I got out the door, told me he was working on a movie, and they, and they called him back in. So I didn't get to do it, but I got to meet him, got to talk to him, and we set up a, 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 a we set up a game. We was going to have a have a game. And I would have loved it. That's you know, awesome. I'd have gave him a run for his money for sure. You know, because I would shoot a pretty good stick sometimes. I mean, you're only as good as the people you surround yourself with. And if you're shooting pool with Minnesota fats, yeah, you're gonna bring out the best in you. You know, <laughs> bring out the fat. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, for sure, bring it out. You know, I mean, that was that's my. Pool play. Yeah, me and a buddy of mine, George Eubanks, we ran away from home. Uh, oh, hell, I guess we were juniors in high school. Went down to Columbus, Mississippi, hustling pool, you know, to make, <laughs> to make some money down in Columbus, Mississippi. Yeah, we'd hustle them, you know. I'd get up there, act like I couldn't shoot, and George would be tearing me up. And the next thing you know, the game's their own. The other guys wanting to get in and shoot George and all this business. And then... Uh, Oh, uh, yeah, they run us out of town. Woodrow Wages came and picked us up. We was hitchhiking back to Memphis, and he was on his way down to the Greenwood to pick us up, you know, Columbus. <laughs> so you were taking people's money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. And George was real good. I mean, he could have been like a real pro, you know. Yeah. Uh, he, he, could, he could shoot a stick like, whoa, like nobody ever did see. He was a natural-born uh, player. You know, there's some people that that are, and George Eubanks was. He ain't around anymore, but we were good buddies when we was growing up. And, you know, we hung at the pool hall, shooting pool, and, you know, slip a beer every now and then, you know. But, yeah, oh, yeah, shooting, shooting, shooting pool, nine ball, eight ball, you know. Rotation. Did you feel guilty doing that to people? No, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody needed to take those old codgers money, it might as well have been us, you know. <laughs> yeah, those old farts in there shooting their mouths off about <laughs> how great they are. That all the big talk, you know. Yeah, yeah. A couple well, of young bucks come in there and leave with all the money. I lasted about a week. And then <laughs> George's mom said, You boys gonna have to go back home, man. <laughs> yeah. It's true. True story. While we're at it, what? Tell us about your David Cassidy deal. Oh, I met him. Yeah, in, in uh, oh God, what's the name? It's the littlest country. Luxembourg. L L Luxembourg. Luxembourg. And, and uh, it's the littlest country in the world. You know, <laughs> and I, I, I went there to do a, a radio interview, and Radio Luxembourg 
uh, was huge. Kid Jenkins. It was huge, Radio it, Luxembourg. Yeah, yeah, it was big time. And so I went from uh, England to uh, there. Uh, 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 About when was that? Do you know? Remember? No, I can't remember. 80s, it, it, 70s? No, it was in the 70s for 70s. sure. But uh, Kid Jensen, that's his name. He was the DJ. And... Uh, I mean, you know, we had uh, Radio Caroline. I mean, rock and roll radio was pirate then. You know, it was stuff. You know, it was a, it was something else. You know, uh, people who were free to play the music they loved. You know, it was rare. And uh, Radio Caroline was one. He had he had a boat and a big ship. And uh, and Kid Jensen in uh, Radio Luxembourg. And so I went up there to do some kind of a deal, radio, uh, you know, interview with him. And um, went back to the hotel. I mean, there, David Cassidy walks up, you know, we, at the bar. I'm at the bar. How you doing? You know, said, how you doing? Well, he knew who I was, you know. Well, of course, I knew who he was. But I, he he had the, the records and stuff. And so we talked and had a few drinks and uh, became friends with David Cassidy for the evening. You know, we got drunk together. <laughs> But <laughs> I, well, I quit twenty something years ago, and he he didn't. So he ain't around, and I am. Um, I don't think he drank so much. He just did, a, and then he just got out of control at this. Well, that's what point. happens. It, yeah. it, you just get out of control. I was, I was running wild and out of control. You know, the daggum doctors had me on a bunch of pharmaceuticals for one thing, and it led to something else. And I, if the symptoms of that, and the, the next thing you know, I'm on this merry-go-round yep. of all these uh, pills, and I'm still drinking, you know. And uh, it, it didn't get good, you know. Uh, me going to do Jews Holland show uh, uh, was the best thing that ever happened to me, you know. I saw Eric sitting there, and he had this—he was so serene. And I said, "That's what I want. Right. I want that serenity and that peace." Serenity and, now. Yeah, well, yeah, well, I have it. I, I have, I have it. I had to grow, grow through all that, you know. Just and, kidding. Uh, I was, well, I'm glad that I was locked away down there in Mississippi when I was going through all those crazy changes, you know. Um, I'm lucky to have survived myself, you know. Right. That's what it was frightening to me. I was afraid of myself, you know. What do you mean you were afraid of yourself? I was afraid of what uh, uh, was going to happen to me, you know. Uh, I was uh, there was I was loose ends, and, and I didn't know what to do, how I could uh, how I could deal with this, you know. I mean, I called a highway patrol one time, uh, the sheriff's department rather, called this woman, and she's a, you know, a sheriff's department, uh, and I said, y'all got a suicide prevention line, you know. I'm sitting there with a 358 Magnum in my lap, wow. and. Uh, she said, no, but I tell you what, Mr. Whitlock, I'm going to keep you on the line here <laughs> until you, you've had a little too much to drink. And, and if, you, if, I don't, if I ain't happy when I hang up, I'm going to send Kenny out there. That was a, he was a sheriff. I, 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 was, I didn't need to be put away. I, I needed to be. I was already in, in locked up in, in a cell, you know. But uh, what? What? So long ago. Wow. What? What started? Uh, okay, I know that when seeing Eric helped you, but were there other things that 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 came along, like one after another, or that helped you move towards getting sober? No, I, just, I got tired of it, I, and uh, I got completely tired of my life and. I, what was going on? I'm, I'm, like I said, it's a good thing I was in out there in, in that national forest and nobody around me. Uh, right. I had to pull myself together, you know. Uh, rather than being my, my own worst enemy, I, I became my own best friend. But I had to do a lot of leaving behind to start all over. You know, hell, we've been together 20 years now. You know, uh, I, I, I closed the door. On, I closed the door on everything, you know before we got together. Mm. Yeah. Glad you did. Oh, hell, me too. I wouldn't be around, I know. No. Um, hmm. I mean, there's more to me than all of that. You know, cause I, I knew me. I kept reflecting back on, on my childhood because that was when uh, I was innocent. You know, 
And I, and I kept reflecting back to that pure natural feeling that I had when I was a boy growing up. And uh, that's, I think that's what, you know, my upbringing helped me to get through my, my downfall, you know.